This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Want to create a lifetime of memories this spring? Do you remember the joy of jumping as a child? If only there was a way your own kids could experience that same joy safely. Spring Free Trampoline has been engineered to eliminate 90% of product-related injuries. The Spring Free design boasts no springs and a flexible enclosure and proudly offers a 10-year warranty. That's peace of mind. Lock in your ultimate backyard safe space before summer arrives. Visit springfreetrampoline.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. Ninety nine point nine KISW, the Rock of Seattle, and we want to thank all you Rockaholics because you really helped us raise a ton of money for kicks for kids. And Friday was an amazing day. We raised, uh, we raised, and we did it for the Wabbits. Uh, we raised well over thirty thousand dollars. That all goes right to Mary's place, so that those kids can get gift cards to buy the sneakers they want. And uh, I, just, is, I want to give oh. a shout out some of these Rockaholics. I'm looking at some of the people who donated money, including. Um, uh, uh, Matt W., who donated $169.69. Nice. <laughs> Matt, you are the best. Or uh, Vadim or Vadim S., $269.69. Nice. <laughs> uh, also, big shout out to Kimberly S., she donated $1,000 to Kicks for Kids. Wow. The really Rockaholics cool. stepped up huge. We had uh, w- Last year, we had an incredible amount of money raised, and we actually beat that. Which I thought was great. Over thirty four thousand, I think we're at right now, and we're just continuing to raise money. The more money we raise, the more shoes uh, go on the feet of all these kids at Mary's place. And you can still donate. Head to kisw dot com to donate today. Let's play B Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So everybody scream his name. B Mix. Don't be a loser. It's time to pump it up for Monday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. And Steve, you need to pump it up a little bit today. Yeah. Yep. Got yourself a loss. I mean... Well, I got nine, I think, right? You got eight. Eight, okay. But your opponent did get a perfect ten. Yes. Yeah. So that'll throw a monkey wrench into the whole plans right there as true. that goes. Sure, true. Well. true. <laughs> so we'll have to see how it goes right now. And we got Kyle in Burlington to take you on. Kyle, are you there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, Steve, get out of here. Goodbye. For those playing at home, Kyle will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Kyle, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. After Pulp Fiction, Uma Thurman's uh, next start in what Quentin Tarantino film? Kill Bill. Yes. Who wrote The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn? Mark Twain. Yes. What birds are traditionally used as gas detectors in coal mines? Uh, Canary. Yes. The gr- what group had the 2005 hit song titled My Humps? Uh, TLC? No. Um, oh, uh, pass. In what Disney movie was Princess Aurora the protagonist? Pass. Lasting uh, only a season, in what MTV show did Claire Danes star? 
Mm. I don't know. Pass. In what year of the mid 2010s did Dave Letterman retire from the Late Show? 10, 11, 12? No, no, no. What musical instrument appears on the Guinness beer label? That's a lute? No. Uh, uh, wire? No. Uh. <laughs> well, Kyle, no. yeah. you got three correct. Uh, didn't drop a deuce. Didn't drop a deuce. But that's nice. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's nice, I guess. Yeah. Like, that's nice. Yeah, that's I nice. Guess. Did great job. Okay. Participation trophy. Maybe a juice in an orange slice. <laughs> uh, that's about all you're going to get there with that one. Hi, Steve. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I'm walking into a buzzsaw. Well, I'm trying to, yeah, yeah, uh, put him down gently when it comes to that one. Ah, are you ready? Yes! 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 After Pulp Fiction, Uma Thurman next starred in what Quentin Tarantino film? Kill Bill. Yes. Who wrote Great the movie. Who wrote the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn? Tom Sawyer? No. Mark Twain. <laughs> yes. What birds are traditionally used as gas detectors in coal mines? Pigeons. No. Uh crows? No. Uh flamingos. No. I'm a flamingo. What group? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll eat your grandma. Wow. What? I love that guy. What group had the 2005 hit song, My Humps? Uh, Black Eyed Peas. Yes. In what Disney movie was Princess Aurora the protagonist? Snow White. No. Sleeping Beauty. Yes. Uh-oh. Lasting only a season. In what MTV show did Claire Dane star? Oh. Uh, my So-Called Life. Yes. In what Jordan y- Catalano. <laughs> What year of the mid-2010s did David Letterman retire from The Late Show? You said mid? Yes. Uh, 2015. Yes. What musical instrument appears on the Guinness beer label? A harp? Yes. In the sitcom Seinfeld, who played Elaine Bennis? Uh, oh, crap. Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Correct. You win. Eight to three. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Sorry, Kyle. Whew. Now, if he was if he was on Wheel of Fortune, he would not have got that right. Right, because I said Luis. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Julia sorry, Louis Kyle, Dreyfus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah you're right. There's yeah. no E on the, 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 the Louis right But I'm going to allow it because it didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't. <laughs> there was enough of a difference there. So congrats, Steve. And for a texter, if you win, can you please play the Sweet Victory SpongeBob? song is your victory song you got it oh look at you i'm a giver you're a people pleaser it's a nice one <laughs> goes for a while actually that's the uh, the new version <laughs> yes. uh the only one that you did miss kyle got correct uh it's called canary in a cold mine oh okay. exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i don't even know that saying oh you really what well, is it yeah, like? Is that like a sex term? No, it, it like the dog in a bathtub. You, you just, well, no, but it could be when you think I about mean, it. I mean, I mean, no, yeah. it's no. like a sacrificial lamb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. they would literally use canaries in coal mines, and if uh, they died, then they knew that the gas was the uh, the kill you type of gas. Mm-hmm. Get the and hell then, out. Yeah, then everyone else would get out of there, and uh, just only the uh, canary would be sacrificed. Yeah, and, that's uh, how it is. Yep. Poor canary. Yep, poor canary. And my so-called life. Also, that was the spot where we first met uh, J- Jared Leto. That's right, Jordan Catalano, baby. Yep. Okay, that's like like that's why you knew that name. I thought that was like the actor's name or something weird. No, but. that was the boy that that the, that was her interest, Claire Danes' wow, interest. So that's yeah. where Jared Leto got his start. I believe that was his first first big acting role. The and one I that totally big. don't. Yeah, I, I totally don't even remember. Like I remember the kid, and I didn't even know that was Leto. Yeah. That's a long, long time ago. <laughs> and they both well, they both have had amazing careers. So that's mm-hmm. that show. There was talent in that show. Yeah, I liked that show when I was a kid. Yeah, so did I. And I wasn't even a kid. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> I thought it was two seasons, but I guess I didn't know. No, it was only just the one only season there. one season. Yep. yep. And they were done. one and done. Yep. One and done. And just like now, with Steve and his win. Congrats. Thank you. Good job, Steve. Uh, there's a Pornhub fan. He goes by the name of... <laughs> yeah, I'm right here. I know. Yeah. I know. This is such a weird thing to go. Like, I, I, I don't know. Would you call yourself a fan? I suppose. I mean, I, you, you go to the site. Um, his name is Lil J Dub One. Um, of course, I now it's not a little J Rub one. <laughs> that was have probably taken. Have you ever commented on Pornhub? No, but I do like to read the comments. I ain't gonna lie. Like there are times where I've just had a just pure curiosity. I'm like, why does this video have 17 comments? And then you read the comments, and it just makes you like, it makes you laugh, but also feel really bad for the world that we're in. Yeah, I, I, um. 
I just feel like, look, I'm watching it. I don't need to have the, the proof out there that I watched it. You know, it's like, hi, everybody. I'm little J-Dub wanted to let me tell you, like your work, man. Right. I never watched the thumbnail and go, I need to share my opinion about this five minutes that I just spent watching this video. Yeah. Well, little J-Dub one, though, posted a, a pretty shocking comment. He wrote, boys, I am here not to watch, but to announce my retirement. I have officially found the one person that is right for me. She is brilliant, beautiful, and loyal. Every day I wake up and realize how happy she makes me. Now, I'm curious. Does that mean that the way that he phrased it, it makes me feel like he's created like a network of like other commenters and they like they know each other. And he's like, hey, everyone. Hey, boys. I know we all talk all the time here on Pornhub, but I'm done commenting. I think you're right, Steve. Right? I know that's the oh. way it is in other communities. See, here's what I think. I think he had to make a public statement because maybe the lady in his life found out how much he uh, checks out Pornhub, oh. and he has to make a public statement in order to um, relieve any uh, insecurity she may have. You may be onto something because he goes on to write, the reason I am done watching porn is because it feels wrong, almost as if I'm cheating. I hope one day you guys that are reading this find the same thing that I have, and I know you all miss me, and I will miss you. Lil J Dub signing off. Mm-hmm. You know what? Brad's probably right. He had to make a blanket statement so that she would be aware that he's done. Um, it is interesting. Everybody has their line when it comes to what cheating means. I mean, look if that's what if that's what J Dub believes, and and his and his girl is also on board with that. All right, well they get to define the parameters of their own relationship. Uh, but there are others that have no problem with the significant other watching porn with or without them. Yeah. I mean, it seems weird to like define that as cheating, though. Yeah. People do, Steve. You're I right. Think, I think it, it is you, weird, but people right. do. Like You could say, I, I am uncomfortable by this. Or I'm, I find this inappropriate. I can understand those. But when you're like, when, if you watch porn, that's like cheating on me. I'm like, well, that's just silly. Like, we need to like... Really yeah, come on. Now. Pull out uh, Webster's dictionary or something like that. But I feel oh, is that like- we got to pull out? All yeah. right. <laughs> I was a little worried for a minute. Yeah, like, right? Hold on. We're, We're not going gonna to have a contest one. to decide who wins this <laughs> argument, are we? See, I was totally in that boat. And then someone described it as if, you know what, you set your boundaries. These are my boundaries. I am not comfortable with this. And for you to do something, you're like, okay, I respect your boundaries. And for you to do something against it, like looking at porn, then in a sense, you are betraying them because you were respecting their boundaries and now you're not. I can understand that. Yeah. I still don't view it as cheating. Same. Like, it's, it's such a weird thing. That's why you got to really, when you start, I mean, you know, and this is something that the average dude doesn't like to do, and that is set boundaries and have these conversations because they're uncomfortable. But then you find yourself in a, in a situation where you are in a committed relationship, and oh, boom, something comes up, and you're like, what? Really? You want me to stop this? And it's like, well, this conversation probably should have happened before you got serious. You know, you really need to go, all right, let's talk about all the rules of this relationship. And a lot of people don't like doing that. They just like to sort of go, oh, well, we'll deal with it when it comes up, as it were, and then, okay. I just went on one of the sites for research purposes to see what kind of comments are on there. Oh, you're not researching. Totally research. I can't read. He's just (laughs) researching. Yes, this is totally for research. I can't even read, like, 98% of these comments, although I do appreciate that. The, yeah. the the ongoing theme, and at least in the video I clicked on, is that people are like, the guy just shut up. Nobody wants to hear your dumb voice. <laughs> I just think that's so funny. And then there are people actually like saying, they're, they're like propositioning the, the, the woman in the video. I'm like, I don't know if she's on these pages reading the comments. It's going to get back to you. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock at 99.9 KISW. Hey, you got something to say? I got something to say. Yeah. They're wild, rapid, <laughs> and on the loose. This is Listeners on the Loose. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. It's Listeners on the Loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show at 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. If there's something that you believe the world should know, this is your opportunity. But remember, when you get on Steve, he's got a rule. When you get on me, you better show some energy what? and bring it. Otherwise, what? I'm gonging you, and then I'm going to say goodbye to you. Oh, I didn't realize that when I get on you, I've got to be on I me. Mean, you know, oh, you, 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 you don't like a relaxed evening? Is that what you're saying? That's what you, you said. I and That's just how it is. All right. If they're going to get on me, they better show that energy. All righty. Otherwise, Fair I don't enough. want to have to deal with it. Okay. No? Two oh six. Did I say that? I, I totally didn't even realize I said that. Yeah, you said if you want to get on Steve. Yeah. Oh, my bad. 
<laughs> well, Freudian slip, I suppose. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Russ in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Russ, are you listening oh. at Radio.com? Yes, I am. Oh, very good. Don't forget, you can get the app. You can go online. Radio.com. It's a beautiful thing. What you got for us, Russ? Uh, first of all, uh, been listening for about five years. Congrats on uh, 50 years, guys. Big achievement. Thank you. Um, so, but uh, no, we are talking about, you guys were talking about um, Fong's Pizza in Des Moines, Iowa. Oh, um, yes. They're the ones with the Fruit Loop. The Fruit Loop Pizza. Yeah. Um, I actually live with Cedar Rapids. It's about an hour and a half, two hours east of Des Moines. Uh-huh. Uh, but we have a, we have a Fong's Pizza here. And when Vicky was uh, mentioning, mentioning the um, Crab Ragoon Pizza, it is like to die for. Really? Yes, it is so good. It's like they've got like the the um, breading, you know, like how they like fold them up. Like the the pastry part is kind of like. On, like it's almost kind of like in strips, but it's on it, and it's got the sweet and sour sauce and everything. Oh, it doesn't man. have any like uh, tomato sauce or anything. It's kind of like a cream cheese nice. for the sauce, mm. and it's like a, a thin pizza, and it's freaking. It's like to die for, dude. I, I'm looking on their menu, and they also I I did not realize this. I think I've watched pretty much every episode of Man vs. Food. I might might have forgotten this, but apparently that was. This restaurant was featured on there because of their General Tso's chicken, and I'm a General Tso's chicken kind of guy. Have you had that one? I yeah, we actually had that one. That one's also really cool. It, it's it's definitely a very when you go into the place, it's really kind of Asian Chinese Japanese themed mm-hmm. uh, because it's got like a bunch of like dragons and stuff like that around. But the all the pieces that we've had from there is like is awesome so they have one um, called fongolian beef because it's fong's uh, pizza yeah and it's mongolian yeah, beef it's awesome. that's we, a uh, great idea I, I mean well you know here from uh, appreciate the call russ thank you so much because uh you know obviously we are not strangers to artisan pizza here in seattle so that sounds really cool that's uh i don't think i've ever had a whole lot of uh Asian style, sort of like you know Chinese restaurant style pizza, if you will. I've never I, had it. I want to try uh, a, a lot of what he just mentioned. They have uh, for for appetizer uh, Chinese cheese sticks. It's mozzarella sticks, but they're made like an egg roll. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Fong's Pizza. Okay. This is Des Moines. All right. And Cedar Rapids. They have a few locations. Why don't oh, we the- Why don't we all get in cahoots and get one out here to Washington? Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Do we have our buddies? I think Dwyer and Michaels, don't they do a show out in the Quad Cities? Is that Cedar Rapids and a few other joints around them? I, I don't know. They're lucky enough to have a Fong's Pizza. I know I can't remember. You know, you think I've known They're these nice guys, guys. for years. I don't know where they were. I know. How horrible is that? We've known them for like almost 30 years, and I forget exactly where they were. I know it's called Quad Cities, but I don't know what the four cities are. I maybe I've had three conversations with the guys. What do you want from me? Oh, I've had a few more at least. I, I can understand why you might, but I should remember, but I don't. I'm on their Instagram, not Dwyer and Michaels, but Fong's pizza and their stuff does look pretty pretty freaking awesome okay i'm jealous if in fact my buddies do live close enough to a fong's pizza and i feel like they got something i don't i don't like it even though we got plenty of great pizza here in seattle still i mean eh. <laughs> you pick the topic i <laughs> know eh. you pick the topic you guide the show 206-421 rock text us at 77999 so- rebecca in seattle you are on the rock hi yesterday you were talking about the funniest tv characters and yes. I don't know if any of you have watched Coupling, the British show Coupling. Oh, writer, I've heard of this show, is, but I've never okay. seen it. Writer is Stephen Moffat. He did a bunch of Doctor Who, the new Sherlock. He's an awesome writer. But the guy Jeff from Coupling is the funniest character I've ever watched. I've laughed out loud more watching him. It's the most naughty show you'll ever watch. Rebecca, I, of all it. these years, I never realized Stephen Moffat was the dude in charge of Coupling. I never knew that. And the lead uh, lead actor is named after him, and his girlfriend is named after Stephen Moffat's real wife, Stephen and Susan. And it is honestly the original coupling, the first three seasons, the funniest show you will ever watch. It's streaming on HBO Max now. So oh, is I it really? Watch it. Uh-huh, okay. Just recently. It All right, Vicky, send so me an email. Watch. I got to watch coupling. Oh my god, so funny. 
I appreciate that, Rebecca. Thank you. I, you know, it's so interesting. Nobody can seem to agree on who the funniest character on TV is. I mean, a lot of folks have chimed in. They they tweeted at us and sent us Facebook messages. And it is nuts that this is the most polarizing topic, the funniest character ever created for television. And it's like nobody seems to agree on anything on this one. Well, with any list, it feels that way. But yeah, you're right. Uh, and when after we finished the show, one that popped into my head that I completely forgot about because she brought up a point like what are characters that make you laugh out loud you know there's lots of funny characters but what are ones that will actually make you laugh out loud and I, I instantly thought of the TV show Dave Lil oh, Dicky right. oh, dude, yeah, his Lil character Dickie. makes me laugh out loud all the time he's so yeah he's so inappropriately awkwardly ridiculously great yeah I mean he's a hip hop version of Larry David yeah and the situations that he gets in some of the stuff that he says in that show especially to a significant other at the time it's just so wrong but I would just be busting up laughing because of it and do you think that, I mean, I think it's interesting, uh, granted, you know, uh, uh, it, it's a lot of years have passed, but nobody mentioned Costanza, George Costanza or Kramer, which I think at the time and for many years after, folks would have thought, you know, w- one of those two were the funniest characters ever. Yeah. Yeah. There have been many moments growing up watching that show that I think Kramer would make me crack up. Yeah. And well, George and Costanza would make me, too. Yeah. You're yeah, absolutely George, right. Yeah. I just, I was, I don't know where it was, uh, you know, because YouTube sends you clips, but I just saw him interviewing for the Yankees job. And I watched that whole bit where he, you know, he meets Steinbrenner and he just ridicules Steinbrenner's management of the team in the 80s and uh, he gets hired. But I was just like, it's so funny that George is so George and yet life sometimes still worked out for him. So it's like, uh, enough with this nerd talk. Don't you know there's a Chinese and pizza place in Arlington and it's awesome? What? There is? I don't know, is it called Chinese and pizza, or is it actually... And do they do things like General So's chicken pizza? I mean, right. do they do like fongs? That's what we're saying. Is it pedal uh, tweezers? Yeah, pedal tweezers. Huh. Like, okay. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it wrong or anything, but it's pedal tweezer as one word, Chinese pizza and restaurant. I'm down. It is Chinese pizza. Oh, get their menu. Get their menu. This could be the... the, the, the this is a lot closer than Cedar Rapids. It is definitely a quicker commute. I'm trying to see if they, yeah, I don't know what their pizzas are, though. Yeah, Where we, well, they, yeah they got like, it, it looks like they got regular pizza and then they got General Tso's pizza. Oh, nice. They got Thai chicken pizza, Kung Pao chicken pizza, oh, the Genghis Khan pizza. Okay. And then the Forbidden City pizza. Ooh. Oh, the Forbidden City. Yes. Oh, that okay, one so, crazy. It's um, ranch dressing, jumbo prawns, green onions, and garlic. Yes. That sounds oh. fun. Definitely doesn't sound like pizza, but it does sound fun. Well, Where's gang- this located? In Arlington. We could go visit uh, Taryn. And me. Oh, yeah, you too. <laughs> I live in Marysville, Smoky Point area. <laughs> and me. Boy, that's, I feel like at this point, it's like we are going to Cedar Rapids if we have to go all that, all that way. It's worth it. Yeah, everyone's like, that place is great. Oh, my gosh. A lot of people are saying it's so good. They are awesome. All right, Vicky. Uh, when we have the Vicky game day at your house someday, when your parents are finally out of that place, we are going to do it. I'm down. You guys play games. I'll go hang out at the pizza place and let yeah. you know how the food's going. Steve, and, you and I, oh, man, we yeah. can do this. We're, then, we're gonna go to the restaurant too. Right, we're just gonna wait. We're gonna wait for you there. That's all I'm saying. Oh yeah. There's so many great oh. things in the land of Marysville. We got the the the, the outlet malls. We got the casino. <laughs> okay. It's the next tourist destination. Okay. Which outlets that, yeah. do they have at that one? Oh, is that the Nike everything. one? They have Nike, Adidas. They got that Lululemon? They have Lululemon. <laughs> they have everything. Oh, Steve, they got Lululemon. You got to go up there. You can save a fortune. Burberry, whatever that is. That's oh, the, yeah. the, the weird scarves. I just like saying Burberry. Right? Like they're tan so. and like plaid looking. It's like plaid, but for rich people. Yeah, I think they like Would you like a scarf? <laughs> oh, is it really? <laughs> it's just a dumb word I love to say. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. 
the world needed a safer trampoline. Dr. Keith Alexander, inventor of the spring-free trampoline, wanted to bring the joy of trampolining to his daughter. His wife said they were too dangerous, so he invented his own. Spring-free trampoline is the world's safest trampoline, with no springs or hard edges. Now, parents can have peace of mind that their kids are outside jumping safely. To learn more, visit springfreetrampoline.com. 20 million dollars, 19 million dollars, 6 million dollars. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too big to fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show at 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Gina in Seattle. Uh, Gina, you are on The Rock. Hi, how y'all doing? Excellent. Good, thank you, Gina. What you got for us? Um, so, um, this was quite a few years ago. Um, I was pretty much younger, and um, uh, I was at uh, the Spa Tree Tavern in Granite Falls when um, every time I stood anywhere near this guy, he kept winning a prize. Well, one of the prizes he won was um, tickets for two to go to the nudist camp in Issaquah that's um, once a year they let the public in. And he asked me, well, every time you stand by me, I win. Um, do you want to go with me? And I said, sure, why not? You know, it's kind of an adventure, you know, once in a lifetime. Uh-huh. And so, um, anyhow, so um, I went with him, and when we got there, um, when you when you first get there, you park in a parking lot, and they pick you up in a shuttle bus to bring you in, and then you, you know, whatever, disrobe in front of everybody, or I went in the bathroom to disrobe. But anyhow, and we had a great time, and I never saw anybody that I knew, which usually I see somebody I know anywhere I go. And so um, I get home, this is massive hours later, it's like almost midnight, and there's mass messages on my phone, and my phone's ringing. And I said, hello. And they said, oh, my God, you were at Nudestock. And I thought, I didn't see anybody I knew. I said, yeah, how did you know? Because I didn't tell anyone. And um, and all those messages were about this, too. And they said, well, you were on the news. You were on all the news stations. <laughs> oh, wow. So you <laughs> went to Bob Rivers' Rivers' Nudestock? Because at first I'm like, I didn't know you need tickets to go to a nudist thing. And now, oh, now it's awesome. all coming together. Only because you're, you know, it was um, once a year they open it to the public. Right. So he tickets. But um, in, in the meantime, so um, a couple of years ago, I told this story, um, and um, and I said, um, I was telling my sister, she came from Florida, and I was telling her, and everyone, my whole family is at the table. And then I looked up to heaven, and I said, well, now you know, Mom, because she's in heaven. And I looked over at my dad, and I barely looked at my dad, and I said, well, now you know, too. And he goes, I already know. Well, um, I have to tell you also that my hair is past my knees then, so they didn't have to blur out anything because they took it from behind. They never asked my permission. And they, they um, he was standing next to me with a cowboy hat and cowboy boots, and they blurred out his butt. So <laughs> was, was this like your guys' first date, basically, was going to nude stock? <laughs> yes, yeah, a stranger. And stuff, wow. But it was really fun. He was a gentleman, and it was great. Did you guys ever hang out again after that, or was that just kind of a one-and-done thing? One and done, but we had a great time, and, you know, so I think he lives, like, further away from me, so, you know, it didn't work out for that, but that was fine. It was wonderful. I mean, it was amazing to do something like that. And, and you had no, uh, so you had no idea that this was going to be a, a locally covered thing, because it wasn't just them yeah. opening it up for the public, but this was Bob Rivers and, and Twisted Radio and all in KISW doing a big promotion. <laughs> Well, I didn't know, and um, and oh, being a, my hair covered, and, and everybody recognizes my hair because it was past my knees, and it's very curly, wavy, you know. Um, yeah, I was recognized by my hair, and all those messages and the calls that came in after that, everything was about me being there. And and um, when I told when I told my dad, and he said I already knew, and I was like, oh my god, I'm not, I'm yeah. not saying more. But, oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> That's well, I uh, appreciate cool the story. call. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I, I'm not surprised all the dudes knew because, I mean, obviously Bob had an amazingly popular show then. And <laughs> talk dude, about like, though, like the, I mean, that guy, he's a smooth talker. To be able to convince someone that you've never met to go to a, a nude concert. 
So there were people there, I, and I wonder if, you know, gosh, if we ever talk to Bob Spiker Joe, you know, in, in the future, I have to ask them uh, if, they, if they wondered at all, if people were there not knowing that it was this big promotion. Because it's one thing to go to a nudist colony and figure, all right, well, you know, it's everybody there, it's self-contained. But nude stock was like, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it was a big event. It was public. That is so funny. I'm that is really things. trippy. And she had no clue. She's just walking in going, ah, it'll be an adventure, but at least it'll be, you know, no, yeah. no one will be that will know me. And Moral know. of the story, Gina sounds like someone who likes to party. Yeah, that's yep. the moral of the story. And the dude was a gentleman, she said, which I don't know if that's code for they had a lot of fun, but she's not telling us. I have no idea. Uh, maybe yeah. he just held the door for her when they walked around. I don't know. Uh, 206. So, oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so he just was hoping to get a happy birthday from, uh, from Miss Vicky. I uh, says, it's my 32nd birthday. Can I get an eye poppy from Vicky and some ideas on what I should do to celebrate? Love the show and thank you for making my work days better from Arnie in Kingston. Ay, papi. Feliz cumpleaños, Arnie. What should you do? I'm thinking some champagne, some whiskey, and maybe a lot of Champagne and whiskey. Yeah. I was just thinking, just go somewhere and just eat like a giant pig. That too. That's that's my perfect birthday celebration. Just pick a place and eat everything. Well, of course, the, you've got to get the right cake if you ask yes, me. Costco. Absolutely. Yeah. Costco cake for the win. Look, I got nothing against Costco cake, but you also, though, I mean, there's some places. I mean, this is your birthday, and I feel like, you know what, you go, you go Cold wild. Stone ice yeah. cream cake. Ooh, oh, good call. Oh. Good call. You know what, Costco Cold Stone, I'm not going to turn any of those down. Um, you know, the, I, I tell you right now, we got Sarah a nice Metropolitan Market cake. I, they they have some good cakes in their bakery. What are, what are the flavors? Uh, like really exotic flavors, like strawberry, you know, something or other. And <laughs> strawberry you know, strawberry exotic. is exotic. Well, everybody. it was strawberry, <laughs> but you know, mixed with a lot of other stuff. I can't think of like a brulee, like it was a strawberry creme brulee cake, something uh-huh. like that. Yeah, uh, strawberry next time I eat was, strawberries, yeah. I'm like, I'm eating the most exotic of all fruits. Yeah, the most exotic strawberries. Fruits, strawberries. That's all I can think of in my head. But they had all sorts of like cool like flavor combos that, you know, rather than just a chocolate cake, you know, they got stuff. So it's a, speaking of restaurants, there's a place called The Greatest American Hero. I don't even know what this place is. The is it off, If it's American after the TV Hero. show, I'm not going. Believe it or not, we have to. You think subs. it's a sub place? Yeah. Yeah, I got to imagine. Is it based Hero off of said, The Greatest American Hero, the show? Because if so, I want to get their shirt. Yeah, I'm not going to go. I, I hated that show, and oh, I hated everything it represents. It looks like it has nothing to do with The Greatest American it Hero. It almost looks like a like an ice cream shop color scheme. It's pastels. like pink, yellow, blues. Wow. Well, Hero is like a hero sandwich, but is that is it a sandwich place? Oh, yeah. yeah. They have cold heroes, hot heroes, light nice. heroes. Is it yeah, Are you saying Hero or Hero? Hero. Hero. Like Greatest American Hero. Okay, it is. Yeah. All right. Like... The, I need a hero. I, <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, that one. <laughs> oh, wow, Steve. <laughs> You're a regular Bonnie da, 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 da. Tyler. You are. Man, yeah, yeah, but no one calls them heroes out here. No. Uh, really? It's like they just got sub. sub. Yeah. No one calls them grinders. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, now I want to open up a Greatest American Euro place. That just seems fantastic. That's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> Save me some of the profits in case there are some. All right, yeah, I'll cut you in on a little bit of that. Thanks, buddy. Do well, they call I want to open up a gay bar slash sandwich shop. We can call it Grinders. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Because <laughs> you get the Grinder app. Okay. Why not? Yeah, I don't right, know if this not? is get the your best foot idea. long. Yeah, okay. Any way you like it. Hey, look, man, uh, you know, I don't know if it's your best idea, but then again, like all of your ideas, you're not going to act on it. No, I won't. I just. Yeah. I, I just throw the names out there. People could do what they want with them. Do you uh, now in Massachusetts? We call them Stuckies. Stuckies. I don't know, I don't know why. Yeah, we would like let's go to Gloucester and get ourselves a lobster Stucky. So a Stucky was a hero sandwich. Yeah, it was like a big sub kind of a thing. I have no. I never yeah, heard yeah, that well, before. Yeah, you know, in Massachusetts, we just had a lot of weird ways to say things. I mean, that's the bottom line. Grinders and heroes. I always heard uh, Stuckies was the one that was like, well, I don't, I don't know what the hell that is. The other day I was going to Albertsons to get a sandwich and they had like, you know, the also like the giant ones that are like three or four feet long. Not maybe not four feet long, but they're about two and a half, three feet long. And they're like that big ass hero set, like bread. I wanted to get one of those and just like post up at like some table and just like eat that by myself and see what's on <laughs> Oh, that would be awesome. Because that just visually would be like the funniest thing, like the giant ass sandwich and you're just trying to polish it off yourself. Oh, and there'd be like little kids just looking like, oh my God, that's huge. And he's going to have it all. I could, I could probably polish it all off. I'm not saying I should, but yeah. <laughs> 206 421 Rock, Texas at 77999. Let's go to Rook in Puyallup. Rook, you are on the rock. Hey, what's going on? What's going on, Rook? How'd you get a name like Rook? Is that like uh, is that your given name or a nickname? No, it's my uh, my birth given name. Really? Uh, Rook like the like like in chess? Yeah. 
so my father met a, when he was in the Navy, met a guy who his name was Rook, and he liked him so much, he named me after him. And that was the guy's first name, too? Yeah. Damn. That's a I, nice tribute to a buddy. Yeah, really. Which is, so it's kind of funny, though. So, like, apparently the fellow was from, like, was from Ireland when they met, so he had this really thick accent, but uh, from what my dad described, he was a brooding kind of jerk. So, like, he was a, <laughs> he was a new, like, he was, my dad was, like, ranked very well, and the dude was ranked way below my dad. And he would just go walking around, like, intimidating the new recruits, because they didn't know any better. They thought that, like, oh, this guy's a scary, scary a-hole, so I have to, like, I have to do what he says, or whatever, and so my dad came up to him one day. He's like, "What is your deal?" He's like, "Oh, what, you're not afraid." He was like, "No, f no, dude. I outrank you. This broom outranks you. What is your problem?" But they never said like. But my dad liked his humor, so they became really good friends. So I was like, "Dad, you named me after a jerk. That's interesting." Yeah, that really is. <laughs> it is interesting. Is this man. my buddy Rook, Rook Kelly? Wait, what's that? Is, is this Rook Kelly? This is Rook Kelly. Ah, Rook's a great wrestler in town. Okay, Steve, I got to say what? one thing right now. How oh, many okay, rooks have you ever you met work. in your life? It took you this long to wonder if it's the guy you know. <laughs> well, I didn't want to, like, he's the only rook I know, BJ. <laughs> I know. It's like, that would be my first question. Like, hey, is, that, is this well, my boy? I, I didn't know my buddy was just calling into the show. So I was just like, I, I like, processed this. And I'm like, it sounds like rook. What are the odds that there's two guys out there named rook that sound the same? Apparently, the odds are pretty low. <laughs> You're right, BJ. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the only rook I know. Like, You're the oh. only rook I know. Well, he's a good dude, BJ. You'd like him. I would. Yeah, I, th- I bet Talented I really would like him. I probably would recognize him quickly as my friend. I would tell you that. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. Can I leave things off of a bankruptcy, like my car? You have to list all of your assets and creditors when you file bankruptcy. So by, you would have to tell the, the court and the trustee that you have the car or that you have a car loan. Uh, you could say that I want to keep my car and continue to make my payments on the car. Uh, but the, the court will need to know that you have a car and, and that may, you may have a payment on the car. So by leaving it off the bankruptcy, if you mean that you cannot disclose it to the court, the answer to that is no, you must disclose it. However, that does not mean that you'll lose those assets. You'll be able to keep things like a car and a house in almost all cases, but you must disclose them to the court. Um, but you'll need to continue to make payments on a house or a car that you intend to keep. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history, but the will to change the narrative is strong today. And our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. Your kids will be saying, Please, five more minutes? I can't believe I did that. (laughs) And, Look how high I can bounce. Spring Free is the world's safest trampoline, the place where stories are made. The innovative design boasts no springs, so you know you're safe. Go ahead and create the greatest stories you'll tell your friends. We're back in stock. Get it while you can. To learn more about the world's safest trampoline, visit springfreetrampoline.com. Mom! 